Hello everyone. Welcome to video lecture series of Computer Organization and Architecture. Today's topic is Memory Hierarchy. In this video, I will be telling you what do you understand by memory hierarchy, what are the basic components, why it is important, means the advantages. Let us begin. First, you must be aware about the memory, right? What is the memory unit? Memory unit, it is an essential component of any digital computer because the computer needs the memory to store some information, some data, some programs. And a very small computer, if we are talking about, means if the size of the computer is very small and there are limited application, so that may be able to fulfill uh, its required task even without the need of the additional storage capacity, right? Whatever the memory is available, that will be sufficient for that particular purpose. But most general purpose computers, they usually run with the higher efficiency as you are also requiring that the uh, like computer which you are having that must be very efficient, that must perform very quickly, means that particular computer must be equipped with additional storage beyond the capacity of the main memory, means there must be some additional storage. So one memory unit, sometimes it is not enough, they don't have enough space so that they can accommodate all the programs in a typical computers. Or you can say it is also more economical to use low cost storage device, right? That can serve as a backup also. Means uh, you used to use a term backup. Means to store your required information, which is not like available currently used by the CPU. And whenever you require, you can access that particular device. It means low cost storage device can serve as a backup. That is also very important. Here you can see in this particular diagram, you can observe the components of a typical memory hierarchy. So there are various components as you can see auxiliary memory, IO processor, CPU, main memory and cache memory. So uh, let me give you a brief about it. See the memory unit which communicates directly with the CPU that is known as a main memory and the device which provides backup storage, right? that is known as a auxiliary memory backup storage means magnetic tapes magnetic disk can be used as a backup space so auxiliary memory they are used for storing some programs or sometimes large data files or other backups so only the programs and data which is currently needed by the processor that retains in the main memory means whatever is being required by the processor that will be available in the main memory and all other information can be stored in the auxiliary memory and that can be transferred whenever required to the main memory. So as I have told you that this shows the some basic components which are the important components over here. So you can see in this particular diagram the main memory it occupies a central position over here. Central position means in terms of it can, it is uh, capable to communicate directly with the CPU and with the auxiliary memory via IO processor. So main memory can communicate with CPU as well as the auxiliary memory also. It means when programs not residing in main memory, right? means that when the programs are not available in the main memory, they are brought from the auxiliary memory via IO, right? And here you can see one more term which is the cache memory. See, this is a special very high speed memory, cache memory. And sometimes it is used to increase the speed of the processing. You must have heard. And the cache memory is employed in computer system basically to compensate whenever there are the uh, speed difference in between the various other units like the speed will be different for the main memory speed will be different for the CPU and all. It means there is a requirement of a technique which is used to compensate the mismatch of operating speed. Right and that mismatch can be handled when CPU when cache is used. So cache is a, that this is a kind of small cache and that is kept in between the CPU and the main memory. And as you can see here, IO processor, input output processor, it manages data transfer between auxiliary memory and main memory. And the cache organization is concerned 
with transfer of information between main memory and the CPU. I hope now this particular point must be clear. And you must be aware that this auxiliary memory, auxiliary memory, it is having a large storage capacity, right? And it is relatively inexpensive also. But here it has low excess speed in comparison to the main memory. So the excess speed of auxiliary memory is less. And the cache memory, this is very small. So it is relatively expensive also, but it has very high, high excess speed, right? So overall goal of using a memory hierarchy is to obtain highest possible average excess and at the same time minimize the total cost of the entire memory system. That is why it is being required. And let me tell you one more point that auxiliary and cache memory, both are having the different purposes. Like the cache memory, it holds those parts of the program and data which are most heavily used. While auxiliary memory, it holds those parts that are not presently used by the CPU. Means it is not presently used by the CPU, but this is heavily used. Now, let us uh, draw a memory hierarchy system. So, when you can draw the memory hierarchy, it is actually being divided into five levels depending upon the speed and use. So, here the processor can move from one level to the another level based on its requirement. And these five hierarchies in the memories you can observe, register, cache, main memory, magnetic disk and magnetic tapes. So the total memory capacity, you can visualize as a memory hierarchy, right? And as a, you can observe over here, there are important two terms, which is volatile and non-volatile. So the first three hierarchies, which we are talking about, register, cache, and main memory. These are the volatile memories, means they can lose the data whenever there is a power off. While the other two memories, last two, magnetic disk and magnetic tape, they are non-volatile means they can permanently store the data. Here these three level 0, 1, 2 means register, cache and main memory. It is also known as a internal memory because this is accessible by the processor directly and this memory contains these three parts. While there is one more term which is about the secondary memory. Secondary memory it is also known as an external memory, means primary memory or internal memory, secondary memory or external memory. So secondary memory, it includes magnetic disk, magnetic tapes, and this is accessible by, accessible by the processor via input-output module. So here you can also observe, let me give you one uh, in detail, the explanation. As you can see, on the higher side, here the cost per bit, we are talking about higher cost, fast excess. Cost is higher because per bit. Why? When you are moving downward, it gives you less cost and slow excess. At the same time, storage capacity of registers is small in comparison to the storage capacity of the magnetic tape. That is being like shown over here. So let me give you uh, in detail when we are talking about level 0. Level 0 means register. So here at some of the places you must see the term CPU. So actually registers are present inside the CPU. Since registers are inside the CPU, it means they have least excess time. And registers are most expensive and smallest in size generally in kilobytes. And they are implemented by using flip-flops. Second level one which is about the cache. So cache memory that is used to store that part of the program which are frequently accessed by the processor. So that frequently accessed pro program part is being stored in the cache and this is expensive and smaller in size uh, generally of the order of the megabytes and implemented using static RAM. Level 2 is about the main memory or primary memory. It directly communicates with CPU and auxiliary memory devices through I.O. processor. You have seen in the previous diagram. And it is the main storage unit of the computer. right? And this is implemented using dynamic RAM. 
Now level 3 that is associated with magnetic disk it is also known as a secondary storage. So secondary storage devices like magnetic disk they are present and they are used as a backup storage right. So magnetic disk in the computers they are usually uh, fabricated by using some circular plates and that has been mounted on a spindle and accordingly it is like implemented. While level 4 that is also known as a ternary storage or this is associated with the uh, magnetic tape. So magnetic tape they are mainly used for backup data when there is a requirement to uh, store to take backup of the huge data. And they are used to store removable files. Files can be removed. And uh, it is very large in size. Size may be 1 to 20 TB. So this tape is a normal magnetic recording. Which is actually uh, you can see with a slender kind of magnetizable covering. On an extended plastic film. Or sometimes on a thin strip. So here you can explain the function among all these five levels level 0 to level 4 and on the basis of the uh, what which is the primary memory which is the secondary one and how these hierarchies can be uh, bifurcated into the volatile and non-volatile nature. This is what I have explained it to you. This is just a note about the memory hierarchy. Now let us talk about the advantages of memory hierarchy. Why it is being required? So there are various advantages. First, memory distribution is very simple and economical. It also removes external distractions in case if any. And data can be spread all over. Data is not being residing at one place. So in case of the failure of any system, the entire data may not be lost. Memory hierarchy permits uh, the requirement of paging and pre-paging. Even here, swapping is very efficient. So when we are talking about memory hierarchy, it reduces average cost per bit of the overall memory of the computer. And it also maintains average data rate for the entire memory system. And with the help of memory hierarchy, it is possible to recover data if um, unintentionally the data is being modified or data is being corrupted at any level of the hierarchy. So these are the various advantages of the memory hierarchy. Thank you so much for watching this video.